Good evening. Welcome to the Thursday night class. Tonight we are learning a special mimer, a Hasidic discourse of the Rebbe, explaining some deeper meaning of Rosh Hashanah. This is a discourse the Rebbe said in Erev Rosh Hashanah, the evening before Rosh Hashanah, in 1981, Tavshin Membeis, in honor of the birthday of the Rebbe, the Tzemach Tzedek, the third Lubavitch Rebbe, his birthday is the day before Rosh Hashanah. And here the Rebbe is explaining some of the deeper meaning of what is Rosh Hashanah about. We all know Rosh Hashanah is the day that we say, why we celebrate the new, it's a new year. Why is this a new year? Why is, what's so special about the day that makes it a new year? And that is of course, because this is the day God created the world. And it is a day that God judges the world in this new year. However, we know that this is not so. It's not the day that God created the world. It's not the first day of, that God created the world. It is the sixth day that God created the world. Why do we celebrate the New Year's on the sixth day that God created the world? And the answer is because this is the day that God created Adam and Eve. And that brought the world to its purpose. That Adam is now able to bring the world to its purpose through serving God. And that is why this is considered the beginning of creation. The Rebbe takes it to very deep levels and we're going to see, we're going to take it step by step. We're going to finish, we're going to learn today the first half of this discourse, the Mimer, and God willing, next week we'll conclude the Mimer. So let's look inside. So the Rebbe begins <coughs> with the words that we read in the Siddur that we pray in Rosh Hashanah. It says, This day is the beginning of your work. It is a remembrance for the first day. That means this is the day, the beginning of, of God's work, and this is a remembrance for the first day. So this is what we need to understand over here. And the Rebbe, the Tzemach Tzedek, the third Lubavitcher Rebbe, Baal Yom Meledes, the Erev Rosh Hashanah, the one who has the birthday, we celebrate his birthday and the day before Rosh Hashanah. So he questions. It seems that there is a contradiction between the beginning of the quote and the end. The pirush ze'ayoyim t'chilas ma'asecho t'chila ma'amesh. That in the beginning we say this is the day of the beginning of your words means that this is the actual beginning. Which means that on Rosh Hashanah, this day, that this is the beginning of that the, all that all of the worlds came to be. I know Shabakal Rosh Hashanah, which means that every single year on Rosh Hashanah, Miss Havim Kala Ailamas Mechadosh, all of the entire worlds come into existence from anew. It's basically God gives, when he created the world, God gives the world a one-year lease. He, creates, he created the world, but the end of, and from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, and the end of the year, we need to renew within God the desire once again to have him bring the world once again to existence. And this is the way it was at the first time, at first. Now, Pirush is Zikar and Liyam Rishain. But then the end of the, of the sentence says, the beginning it says, Zayim Tchilas Maasecha, that this day is the beginning of your work. Then at the end of the sentence we say, Zikar and Liyam Rishain. Zikar means that this is a remembrance for the first day. Which means that Rosh Hashanah is only Zikor and Neyem Rishon. That Rosh Hashanah 
is merely a, com a commemorates the first day. It's not that this is the beginning of a creation. So, seeing, so right there, there is a contradiction in the statement, in the message that we say in the prayers of Rosh Hashanah. Um, and the Tzemach Tzedek explains as follows. It says, the Beroi Shashona, Yeshnam Shnei Yanim. It says that in Roi Shashona, we actually commemorate two things. Number one, Shut Chilas Maasecho, that Roi Shashona is the beginning of the work, of, of God's work. And the second thing, Vashu Zikoro in the Yom Rishon. And also that this is a remembrance for the first day. So there's two things. It is the beginning of the works and it's a remembrance for the first day. As he, he will soon explain what that means. The fact that we say first, first we say that Rosh Hashanah is the beginning of your works. And then we add, not only is it at the beginning of your work, but it is something else. Is it is also a remembrance for the first day? Muchach, that is evident. The zesh roish hashonah is a korem liem rishon on nale yoisem is zesh otchilas maasecha. And this is evident. The fact that this is mentioned, the second, the second, is evident that this is something which is higher. It's greater than the first thing. Because that's how we mention things. You first mentioned the, the smaller thing. Then he said, not only is it the beginning of a creation, it is something even bigger, and it is a remembrance for the first day. So this is what we need also to understand. What are those two things? And why is the second thing bigger, more important than the first thing, that this is the beginning of your creation? So the Rebbe continues, the Yuvan Zeh, to understand this, we need to preface first an explanation. We need to understand the question that we asked before. How is it that we say about Rosh Hashanah that this is the beginning of your works? The Yedua Shailam, as we know the question, the famous question, Our sages tell us that the world was created on the 25th day of Elul. The 25th day was the first day of creation. The Rosh Hashanah, what happened on Rosh Hashanah? This is the sixth day of creation. This is the day when Adam was created, the first man. Of course, Adam and Eve, the same day. Which is the sixth day of creation. And the sixth day of creation, this was the end of the creation. And yet we call it the first, of the beginning of creation. This is what the Rebbe is asking. How do we say about this day? That this is the beginning of creation. Comes the Rebbe and explains. The Tachlis, Akavana, the Brias, Oilam, who Sheye Boygil Venakus. What is the purpose of creation of the world? God didn't need this world. He doesn't need this, 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 all the luxuries in the world. He doesn't need to drive the Ferraris. He doesn't need anything. He doesn't need us. He doesn't need nothing. The only reason why God created this world is for one thing. It is he, he desired to have a place where he will be revealed. So this is the purpose of the creation of the world. That God should be revealed. The ad, now what does it mean that God should be revealed? It's not only that he should be revealed in one, in one area in the world, or one area of the person, or some people will reveal him, or some creatures will bring out his glory. No. The Achalia, they call Pratu Pracha Be'abriya, is God wants to make sure that every single element of the creation should be part of this revelation of God's glory. Everything is, is for that purpose. Our sages of blessed memory said, 
in the con at the conclusion of the tractate of uh, the ethics of the fathers, it says a statement called everything that God created in his world, he, he did not create it, he did not create it, but for his glory. Only solely for his glory. And interestingly enough, says the, the Rebbe points out that this is the tractate, this is the Mishnah that we actually read on the Shabbos afternoon, the last Shabbos before Rosh Hashanah. About the glory of Hashem that is being revealed through everything, every creature in the world. How is this world, how has this come to be? How is this revelation of godliness achieved? It is through man's divine service. And this is why, this is why we say about the day of Rosh Hashanah. This, is, this day is the beginning of your works. Why? Because this purpose. Because that purpose, that godliness should be revealed in the world, which is, this is the ultimate intent of the, of the creation, of the works of God. When did it begin? When Adam was created. In addition to the fact that when Adam was created, he started potentially to, to fulfill this, this purpose, the possibility to, to have godliness revealed. So not only the possibility started then, it actually happened. The beginning of the actual revelation happened on that day when Adam was created. As our sages tell us, and the day that Adam was created, he gathered all of the creatures and he announced, he proclaimed to them he proclaimed, he announced, he declared, let us come, let us prostrate ourselves and bow a knee, bow the knees in front of Hashem, our Master. And all the created beings, they all responded and they said, Hashem Allah Geus Lavish, that God has reigned. He has garbed himself in grandeur, the, the greatness of Hashem. Nishleima. And the Rebbe adds, the Zesh, Oimrim Zayim Tchilas Maasecho, explains that the phrase, this day is the beginning of your works. This was chosen to say, to be, uh, to be said, the Anshei Knesset Agdela put it in the city to pray on Rosh Hashanah. Why was this chosen? Even though Rosh Hashanah is only the beginning of the intent of the works, because when we're talking about the term works reflects fulfillment. The Kemoyishabodamashlemus they call inyan ukeshabodafke. Just like in humans. When do you, when is something considered complete when it comes to actuality? If you have the intention to buy your wife flowers and you never end up buying, then it's not considered done. You have all the good intentions, doesn't make it happen. When, you ha when it's actually done, and the same thing is and the same thing is true in above in the spiritual world, the fact, the reason why it's up in, in the spiritual world this way, that it has to come to, into action. That's why today, in, in, in you, by humans, it's the same thing. Adam Adam alien. Man is considered Adame, they resemble the one above. Where does, is the fulfillment of the entire Seider It means the whole spiritual. 
uh, cosmos when uh, when where is it complete Basia, in the world of Asiya, the world of action we know there are spiritual worlds above which are very god is very revealed of there compared to what what we see here we are here we don't see god but nevertheless all of these godly revealed worlds are not the purpose they're not the completion they're not the fulfillment of god's purpose only in this world of action so on this basis we can understand the phrase that we say Rosh Hashanah davening, that this day is the beginning of your works why the maise because action the, the works reflects of fulfillment because Rosh Hashanah is the day that man was created this is the beginning of the fulfillment of the creation now the rabbi adds something else he says also, in addition to the Rosh Hashanah, is called Tchilat Maasecha, the beginning of, of your works. Rosh Hashanah is also referred to with Ze Hayom. This is the day. The Rabbi is very careful to reading these words. Why? Because what does it mean, Ze Hayom? So we know the word ze, when you say ze, this shows on something that is right in front of you that you can see it. Ze. You see, this is something. You see this, this is open for you, it's revealed. And the same thing is also the word hayom. Hayom, the day. Day is light. It says in the beginning of creation, God called the day by Lokim Lao Yom. God called the light, he called it day. So both words that is used in this sentence, ze, this, hayom, day, this day shows an ultimate revelation, something which is open and revealed. The ze hayom u gilui betachlit. The ze more al gilui. The word ze mare be'etzba'o, that you point with your finger and, and, and you say this, v'omer ze. Ve'yom more al gilui. And also the fact they is also shows revelation. God called the day, the light, day. And we have double, two words. You have two terms reflecting, referring to revelation. Is the ultimate revelation. And this is what it means. Why is Rosh Hashanah the beginning of your works? Meaning that this is the beginning of the fulfillment of creation, the shlemut, the completion of the creation. Because then the revelation began. And that is the idea of Zayom. This is the day. The Rebbe goes further now to explain this concept deeper. The fact that Rosh Hashanah, which is the day that Adam was created, is the beginning of your works. To understand it on a deeper level, says the Rebbe, understanding a deeper Look at this. In a yadua, it is known. We know that man's divine service has the power to change the past. We have the power to change the past. What does it mean to change the past? Number one, teshuva. Teshuva, when a person does teshuva, you change the past. But this is changing a past in regards to oneself. In addition to that, a man has also the ability to change the past, not only of his own past, but the surrounding. We see, for example, the Torah says that uh, there is a law 
regarding the Beisdin. When Beisdin rules and decide when is Rosh Chodesh, when is the beginning of the month, this, when Beisdin makes a decision and makes a, uh, decides when is the day, when is a month, when we add the certain, another a leap year, we make an extended year, all of this decision God gave in the hands of the based in the rabbinical court. And when they make a decision, it can change the past. What does it mean it can change the past? There are certain laws that, that, uh, that are affected by this decision. For example, there's a, uh, even physical laws. For example, there's the concept of, uh, uh, the Talmud tells us that, um, that uh, um, until a certain age, uh, when, uh, when, uh, if God forbid a, a woman is, is uh, violated, and a child that is violated is, is still considered a virgin. So until a certain age, which is three years old, that is, is still, uh, still comes back. So what happens if it happens after she turned three? And the, and the last month of the year, and then based in the rabbinical court decided to change and make this year as a leap year. That means she has another month to reach the age of three. The Talmud tells us, based on the Talmud Yerushalmi, that this decision has an effect on a woman's physical status. It's unbelievable how it affects retroactively. So we see that a person Man has the power. We have the ability, the ability to change the past. We have the ability to certainly to change our own past, but even to change the past of all creation. That when a person, when man makes the, uh, uh, does the right thing, he does the shuva, and he proclaims God as king of the world, it affects that everything that was affected beforehand is also comes to its completion. That's what the Rebbe continues and says, um is moving from this is understood by Mikol Shekain. That is most certainly understood that this applies regarding the work of Adam Shehaya Yetzir Kap of Shalakadesh Baruch Hu. Adam, who was the hand, handiwork of the Holy One, blessed be of God. So he certainly has this power, the spiritual potential to reveal this. That uh, what, what Adam affected the entire, all of the creation by him, by his declaration. When he declared, let us come together, let us bow, let us prostrate ourselves in front of God, our maker. This affects their existence even before he, Adam, carried out his service. Why? Because since from the very outset, the purpose of the creation, the intent of the creation is that the man through his divine service should draw godliness into this world. L'chein, therefore, le'acharei shenimshach ba'ilam gilu ilikus. After godliness was revealed, was drawn down to this world, nase alidei ze ilu igam ba'metzius ha'ilam shoyon lifnei ze. This brought about an elevation into the world, even in the world prior's, ex- world's prior existence. That too was elevated. And this applies especially since why was why was everything created to the first in the first place? It says Adam was created last. Why was it created last? Why was everything else created first? It was created in order to prepare the world for Adam to be to have a, a, a ready world so he can do his work. So all of this was a preparation for Adam to serve Hashem. So therefore, when Adam actually did this, it affected not only him, 
and not only the present, but affected the past and affected everything that the world, ex everything that existed in the world in the past as well. So the Rebbe continues, This is what it means that the statement that the day of Rosh Hashanah, the day that Adam was, uh, Adam was created, this is the beginning of the works of Hashem. The Pirush HaPashut, which is the simple meaning because first and foremost, everything has a simple meaning. Is What is the simple meaning? When we say this is the beginning of your works, we're not talking about only some work. We're talking about the, the beginning of all of the works. Even including the works that took place in the first five days of creation. Which includes even the dimension of time that of those days. That also was changed retroactively by Adam. Because through the work of Adam this affected a change in the existence of the world, even the world that was existed beforehand. And therefore, that is why we can say that this day is the beginning of the creation, the beginning of the works. This is the beginning of all the creation. The entire creation is beginning now, even though it was the sixth day, because that brought about the completion and changed the past as well. So then, in the moment Adam Marisha was created, and in the moment that he started his work, proclaiming, declaring that God is king, and that all the entire creation joined him in proclaiming as God is king, that was the beginning of the creation. Now the Rebbe adds, and just as it is, Rosh Hashanah, the first time, the day that Adam was created, it, that came about the fulfillment and the realize, it, it, it to be realized that within the creation, your works. And this was in a new development, this was the beginning of your creation, even though the creation started before, but we say, no, 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 whatever happened before is nothing. Now it's a beginning of your creation. Now when Adam took control and he started proclaiming God, this is, it became a novelty. This became a radical change. And this was, was considered the beginning. Says the Rebbe, just like it happened then, the first year, similarly, exactly so, this is what happens every year on Rosh Hashanah. What happens every year on Rosh Hashanah? Through the fact that the Jews' coronation, the Jews' coronation of God, when Jews coronate God as king of the world, that the Shem should be the king upon them, and on the entire world, the entire creation is renewed and brought to be, and brought to a, 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 a new state of fulfillment a completely new state of fulfillment. Every single year. This happens every single year. And this brings about also a fulfillment and renewal even in the spiritual realms above through our work down here in the, below in this world. It says, this is based on what the Mizrich Magid says. The Admir Azok and the Alter Rebbe also repeated it. Alamaymer HaMishneh. And the teaching what the Mishneh says, Da Malama Lamimach. The Mishneh says, you know what is above you. So the Mizrich Magid explains it, he, he, he learns the Mishneh a little differently. He says, Da Malama Lamimach. 
No, what is above? Mimach, it comes from you. Whatever is above there, it comes from you. The kola in yonim shalem a'ila, a mimach. All the things that is above comes from you. The Rebbe continues. Ulachi amri zayim tchilas masechel. So now we explain what is Zayim Tchilas Maasecha, what is this, is the day, this day is the beginning of your works. Now the Rebbe goes on to explain what is the second part of this statement. Second part of the statement says, Zikaran Yayim Rishayim, a remembrance for the first day. And we said before, being that this is mentioned, and that Tzemach Tzedek explains that these are two separate things, and the second part of the statement is a higher thing than the first part of the statement. The remembrance of the first day is higher than the fact that this is the beginning of your creation. And he explains. The dimension of Rosh Hashanah that is a remembrance of the first day is greater, surpasses that which is the beginning of your works. And he explains why. Because the beginning of creation, the beginning of your works, this reflects the fulfillment and the renewal of creation that is brought about through man's service, as we just explained. Now, when man's work can only draw down what man can reach, it is called Isarusa de Lesata. It is called an awakening of below, an arousal from below. When a meaning arousal from man's service, when a man reaches out up to Hashem and, and reaches up to fulfill his mission, he can only reach so far as much as, much as man can reach. So, so this is the trilas ma'asecha, the beginning of your works, reaches only to a certain level. In contrast, what we say, the end of this statement, it says, Zikor and the Yom Rishon. Now, when we're talking about Yom Rishon, first day, what is the first day? First day of creation. What happened in the first day of creation? Says the Rebbe, as the Rebbe, the Tzemach Tzedek, explains in that Maimer, in that Hasidic discourse that I mentioned before, Sheam Shoche Az Oiso Mitzad Atzmoi. What happened on the first day is that it was drawn down from Hashem on his own initiative. Why? Because there was nobody else. On the first day, there was no man to draw down the, in Hashem's desire. There was no one that existed to arouse God's desire. And as it is written, we'll read in, in Genesis, it says, There was no man. Not only was there not an arousal in actuality from, before, from below, there was no possibility to, for an arousal. It didn't exist any possibility. There was nothing else. Nothing, nothing existed. So what happened? So the first day when Hashem created the world, it was a total God's initiative. And the drawing down, the drawing down from Hashem was with only because of the kindness of Hashem. For he desires kindness behind it. And the implication is that so, so number one, firstly, there is one difference what happens now between what happens now and then. And what happened then? Now everything what happens, everything that we get, it comes with a judgment. 
if we deserve it or not. And the drawn down in the first day was a result of his kindness. The world was built by kindness. In addition to that, says the Rabbi, in a chesed zedi emrishen ulemailo loyrak me chesed kemeshu bemidus. Moreover, says the kindness that it was expressed on the first day is not only above the kindness as it functions as one of God's emotive qualities, but it is also above the source of kindness, the way it existed in the intellectual attributes. This is what we learn in Tanya these days, where we learn about where does the emotion comes from, the emotive attributes comes from the intellect. So he says that the, the kindness of Hashem on the first day was not only greater than the kindness now, it is even greater than the kindness the way it is in the root of the kindness, which is in the, in the spiritual intellect. Because it is the, 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 the finding characteristic is not kindness, but chafetz chesed. The desire for kindness. Now, the dimension of desire is a much greater dimension. In it is pleasure. A pleasure in Hasidus explains deeply that a pleasure comes above logic, above everything. When there's a will, there's a way. There's a, there's a will, and there's pleasure. It comes, it, it is rooted deeply in God. Elo. However, the desire, however, was that there should be kindness. So that's why the desire, the deep desire in God came down in, in a form of kindness. And from this desire, the potential was that the world was built by kindness. And that was drawn down. From that desire, the chesed, the kindness that the world was created with, was came about. And the Rebbe further continues to explain. He says the inner reason. The inner reason why the First day of creation is called Yom Rishon, first day. Says the Rebbe, listen carefully. It says, The revelation of the desire that he desired, kindness, that was revealed on the first day, is the first revelation. Oyer, yom, it means light. Yom is revelation. Which means, This was the motivating factor. This was the source of the drawing down the attribute of chesed, which was brought about the creation of the world. And when we say, that this day is a zikoin, a remembrance for the first day. Now we understand what that means. What is the first day? So we said the first day is Yom is the revelation, the, the godly revelation of the very ultimate revelation of the very desire of Hashem to bring about. In a time, in a day, the first day when there was nothing else existed. There was nothing else to draw, Hashem, draw down Hashem's desire. And in Rosh Hashanah, we awake again this ultimate desire in Hashem, which is higher than the beginning of, of creation. This was the ultimate desire before anything existed. Now what happens every year in Rosh Hashanah, we bring that desire as well, says the Rebbe. That every Rosh Hashanah, through remember, men's remembrance of the way 
existence came into being on the first day, when we pray in our prayer, we say, Zikaran Yam Risha, remember God the first day. She'er az agilu de chafetz chesed. That then the chafetz chesed, the desire of kindness was revealed. Alidei zeh mamshichim gilu zeh. We draw down even this ultimate desire down into this world. וזהו שעניין שראי ששונה זיכרון עם ראשון, הוא נע ליועסם מזה שראי ששונה, התחיל אז מהסכם. And this, what, what we said before, that the concept, the, the aspect of ראי ששונה, which is the remembrance of the first day, is in a greater dimension, higher than the dimension of ראי ששונה, which is the beginning of your works. Why? כי תחיל אז מהסכם, הוא שנמשך על ידי סמו סדו לסעתו. Because the beginning of the works is something which is drawn down through the arousal from below, from man's work. But the first day, the revelation of the desire of kindness, this is the first and the ultimate revelation. This is the source and motivating factor of the entire Seder Ishtalshalus, the entire spiritual cosmos, Milo Mata, the higher and the lower. And this dimension of the desire kindness is not even in the framework of up and down. It is above everything. And I think we're going to stop over here. We're going to learn the first uh, four chapters of this Mimer. And God willing, we shall continue next uh, next Thursday, the night before Rosh Hashanah, which is the birthday of the Tzemach Tzedek. God willing, we'll continue next Thursday. Thank you for joining. Any questions? We'll take now questions.